HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello, and welcome to another edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, the Hopkinton Library hosted Dog Day. The new Elmwood principal has been chosen. We have the latest in Hiller's sports, and the Board of Selectmen discussed liquor license policies. But first, here are some things happening around town you should know about. Hopkinton High School started a TV club this year. The club is ran by HCAM station manager Jim Cousins. One of the projects the TV club is taking part in is a five-minute high school news broadcast that will be shown on Thursdays every other week. Hello, Hopkinton High School. I'm Chris Pomeroy, and welcome to HHS Today. Believe it or not, the annual town meeting is less than three months away, and now is the time to submit articles. If there is something you want to submit, you could submit the article until March 2nd, the draft of the article can be submitted to the Selectman's office or by email to mglynn at hopkintonma.gov. It will be reviewed and translated to legal language by town council. Petition papers may be obtained and submitted at the town clerk's office during normal business hours. Most people probably already know, but an organization called SafeWise confirmed that the town of Hopkinton is one of the safest in the state. The organization ranked Hopkinton fourth on their top 20 list behind Wayland, Norfolk, and Boxford. Hopkinton was ranked as having less than one in 1,000 residents be involved in a violent crime and only just above two out of 1,000 in a property crime. A few Hopkinton residents have announced their candidacy for Board of Selectmen. So far, the candidates include the current constable, Michael Yumina, current chair of the Hopkinton Youth Commission, Margie Wiggin, and three-term planning board member, Claire Wright. Below, you can see some positions candidates are needed for, including Board of Assessors, Board of Health, and two are needed for the planning board, as well as someone for town moderator. Stay up to date with the election by checking out our website, hcam.tv. Hiller's Swimming got yet another big win this weekend as they took the victory in the TVL Conference and Hiller's Girls Track and Field took home the TVL Championship. The girls finished the regular season 8-0 and and will be competing on in the postseason. Two multi-sport Hopkinton Hillers signed national letters of intent to play in college. Nick Canal signed a national letter of intent to play football in the Ivy League at Cornell University out of Ithaca, New York while state wrestling champion, multi-sport athlete Josh Sokol signed up to man the trenches over at Sacred Heart University, a Division I school out of Fairfield, Connecticut, out of the Northeast Conference. I started playing football as a freshman here at Hopkinton, and um, it was an awesome experience. It's a great program. For much more on those stories, be sure to check our website, hcam.tv. The Board of Selectmen recently discussed liquor license policies. One of the goals of the discussion is to create a more uniform policy throughout town regarding closing time of establishments that serve alcohol. The Board of Selectmen authorized the town manager to come up with a draft of regulations for liquor license policies. The goal is to get a more uniform policy throughout town. The policy states that Sunday through Thursday, bars or taverns can stay open 11 a.m. until 11 p.m. and Friday and Saturday, they could stay open until midnight and on New Year's Eve, 12.30. If bars or taverns wish to stay open later or defer from the stated times in the policy, it will be up to the Board of Selectmen whether to allow the facility to do so. Section 12 
or the various establishments in town. Basic restaurants, yeah. And what did we decide there? The, the point is that what, the, what's, what Part B says is you don't have to be open all those hours. If you want to close at 9 or open at 1, what, you know, p.m., whatever, you can do it. You can do what you like as long as you're with, oh, not open outside those hours. But what if someone wants to stay open until 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday? Slide, then they'd have to apply for, for a specific license waiver from the Board of Selectmen. For that for year that. or for that night? For that, for one day, night they want to do it? No, uh, okay. For every night of the week, every Saturday they want to stay up until one. They'd have to put that in their license application. The board of selectmen would have to approve it outside the boundaries of this policy. So this is the general, but we're going to allow for individuals to extend a little bit if necessary. It, well, so it's the board's discretion. Right, okay. But they can, they can always apply. We just don't have to grant. In general, all licenses will be within these hours. Again, the, the Part B says that we, you can be open less than those hours. We're, we're not going to be concerned about it. This goes to the concept of simplifying the license so every single license doesn't have every single hour delineated when they're all different. Okay. Questions on that? Yeah, Mr. but, see, but I, I, to Mr. Kamala's point about Monday night football, uh, Thursday night football, and Sunday night football, you know, the, you know we really have, to me, you know, the, again, um, you know, the market will decide to some extent and so you know then so will the the restaurants respond if they want to if they want to be open i i i've been saying um you know make it make it a midnight um across the board and and why should we say you know a, a sunday you know it's it's you know i'm a i'm a big church goer and uh, but i still believe that um, if somebody mm -hmm. wants to watch the end of the end of the uh, eight o'clock game and it gets over at, uh, at midnight that they should be able to watch it. Fine. Okay. I think the consensus is the board's generally fine. I know you don't like it, but I mean, there is a mechanism for people to apply to get outside of it. And I think that's an important point. The proposed policy changes will first have to go through a public hearing to take effect. Last week, the school committee hosted a public question and answer forum for the final two candidates for the Elmwood principal position. And now, the new principal for Elmwood has been announced. Hopkinton Public Schools Superintendent Dr. Kathy McLeod announced that the current Elmwood interim principal, Ann Carver, has accepted the principal position permanently. Carver has filled the role since David Youngberg left to take a position in the school administration office this past September. HCAM News spoke with Principal Carver at last week's meet and greet with the two final candidates for the position. I, you know, I was encouraged by some administrators that I worked with and when the first, the first time that it was mentioned to me, I, I think I giggled and said, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think that's for me. Um, and then I gave it, so, you know, over time gave it some thought. I continued to get encouragement from administrators that I worked with and for. Uh, I decided to take, to enroll in an admin program. And the first class that I took, the first question that the teacher asked was, why do you want to be a principal? And I remember kind of squirming in my seat and thinking, do I want to be a principal? And then by the time the, the courses were over and I had had my, I had another degree, I thought I sure do want to be a principal. I think the reason is simple. It's that when you're a classroom teacher, you have direct impact of maybe 22 kiddos and, and their families. But in the role of an assistant principal or a principal, you, you can multiply your impact by the number of classrooms in your building and the number of teachers and families that you work with. So it's, it's sort of having a little broader reach mm -hmm. and um, being able to sh share your joy for teaching and learning with a whole lot more folks. Uh, how have you liked your time as the uh, interim principal here and what are some of your goals if you get the job full time? I've loved, I've loved my time as principal here. What, what, what's kind of nice when you, when you come in to, for instance, when I started as an assistant principal, the kids just saw me, you know, they meet, met me and greeted me and they'd say, um, oh, you're the new assist assistant principal. But when I took on this role as principal, the children knew me as assistant. So for all of the students that I knew and, and, and met with in the first months that I took on the role, they all saw this as quite a promotion for me and they were very happy for me. Oh, now you're going to be the principal. And they, you know, the kids would start asking me, well, could we have longer recess? They saw me as a decision maker. So um, asked lots of what could you do for us kind of questions, and that was an awful lot of fun. Um, uh, the teachers at Elmwood School are incredible. 
the the families are you know, just wonderful. I, I've met so many wonderful people, and I, I've enjoyed every minute of it. So I, I hope that if I'm uh, allowed to have the privilege of continuing on as principal, uh, I'll be thrilled with that and very excited to keep it keep going the good things that we've started this year. Congratulations to Principal Carver, and we look forward to continuing to see you around Elmwood. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have the latest Hillers sports update. Courtney has our HCAM insider, and the Hopkinton Library invited the public down for Dog Day. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. My name is Louise Coleman. I'm with Greyhound Friends on Saddle Hill Road in Hopkinton. We uh, have an adoption kennel here, and we have greyhounds, but we also have started having hounds and hound crosses and beagles. We're always here, seven days a week, nine to five. Our website is greyhound.org, and our phone number is 508-435-5969. So uh, we're open to the public all the time. Just uh, give it a ring. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Public Library invited the public down to their temporary location at 65 South Street for their Dog Day Grand Opening. Many stopped by to say hi to some pups and check out the library's temporary home. So we've had a few things going on today. We started the morning with a visit from Clifford, the big red dog, and we had a whole bunch of kids in here who were super, super excited about that. And then we had cake uh, with the trustees. Um, some of our trustees came and mingled and served cake and hot chocolate and coffee. Um, and after that, now we've had Bay Path and Greyhound Friends come in with some of their dogs who you have just met. And we also have Gracie, the service dog, back in Children's, and kids can come in and read to her. And she comes in semi-regularly here. Um, and so that's been our day. We've had a bunch of people come through. We're really happy about it. Uh, the people have discovered our new location at 65 South Street, and we hope folks keep coming. And we're so grateful to everybody who came today, Clifford and Gracie's handler and Bay Path and Greyhound Friends. It's been really fabulous to have a day with the dogs. So this is Rocky. Uh, he's uh, a little bit shy. Uh, but he's a really, really nice dog. He, you can always tell how old greyhounds are because they have their, their birthdays in their ears. Um, so he was born in August of 2012. Um, nice with people, good with kids, probably not good with cats. Um, very calm. And he'd... Uh, he do well with a, another dog that's self-confident, but um, he's a good boy. Come on, what are you doing, Rock? I, I'm Heather. I'm the adult services librarian and a huge dog person, in case you couldn't tell. And I just met Manny probably an hour ago, and he is such a love bug. And he will just come and say hello and lean on you and is so thrilled for anybody to say hello and is so responsive to people. He is the sweetest sweetheart, and I'm very tempted to take him home myself, so you'd better hurry up <laughs> if you want him. But he's, he's just a doll, and he's very friendly with other dogs. We had some kids in the kids' room with him, and he was very sweet with them, so he really seemed like a fabulous, fabulous dog. You wanna dog. say hi to a dog? You know, you're 90 you're pounds. You're there we go. Good boy. Hi, I'm Liz from Bay Path, and this is Lucy Lemonade. She is a little Yorkie. She's about six years old, um, and um, she's looking for her forever home. She gets along really great with other dogs and cats and kids and people. She just really loves to be held. Um, she actually will, like, wrap her paws around your arm and like you can actually feel a grip <laughs> she just loves um, affection so she's really su really sweet dog like I said about six um, would need help with potty training a little bit but you know walks well on leash and um, gets along with everybody so come see Lucy 
Hiller's winter sports is in the last few weeks of the season, and while some teams have already clinched postseason spots, others are fighting to get in. Here are the latest happenings in Hiller sports. The Hopkinton Hillers took on Ashland for the TVL championship in swimming. The meet was a mixed meet with the boys and girls team. The Hillers ended up losing by a single point due to a coach's scoring error. The boys are now 6-3 while the girls are 7-1 overall, but both teams still have a couple meets ahead, including the TVL dive meet at the Keefe Tech Pool, as well as postseason competition. The White Hot Hillers hockey team took on Assabet on their home ice at Navin Arena in Marlboro, and the offense once again exploded. Yeah, I missed it too. Here's a shot and a goal by Finlayson from between the circles. It's Finlayson and races in. He, he, he hits Abbott perfectly and he scores. Oh, what a pretty pass by Cam Finlayson. And Will Abbott finished, and that gives the Hillers. A 2-0 lead, 30 seconds in to the second period. Behind the net, delinquencies double team. Now Sloan with it. Oh, nice backhand shot and a goal! It's put in by Delaney. Well, Jack Sloan went behind his back. And he threw it out to Delaney, and Delaney jammed it in, and the Hillers now lead 3-0. And Abbott comes in chase, and he steals the puck. Takes it away from Delaney. Now Simos. Simos gets to the circle. Cross ice it goes to Dan Delaney. Delaney Arista. That's in goal. It's tipped in front. Delaney's going to get credit for it. But it went off a defenseman. And the Hillers have put their third goal here in the second period up on the board and take a 4 to nothing lead. But they look pretty solid here. There's a shot and a goal in front, and Abbott puts it in to give the Hillers a 5-0 lead. Oh, he was on the doorstep right inside the circle, and a bouncing puck came to him, and he just hammered it home, except the penalty. It's a slash. Slap shot from Pickens in from the point. It's a goal. Not sure if it was tipped in front. I think Will Pickens got it, and if he did, for Will, that is his second goal of the season. And the Hillers, with a power play goal in seven seconds. The Hillers hockey team got their fourth shutout of the season, taking down Asabet six to nothing. Will Abbott scored two goals in the victory. The Hillers followed up with a great performance as they took down Norton on the road six to two. Steven Simos netted three goals for the Hillers as the playoff bound varsity team improved to 12 and 2 overall. The Hillers boys basketball team split their last two games as they beat Holliston on Friday, January 29th, 59 to 45. They then fell to Medfield on the road Tuesday, February 2nd, 57 to 38. The Hillers boys now stand at 6-9, and nine, and they will need to win four of their final five games to clinch a playoff spot. The Hillers girls basketball team also split their last two as they defeated Holliston on the road, 55-39 to, to officially clinch a playoff spot as they earned their 10th win of the season. The girls fell to Medfield the following game on Tuesday the 2nd, 62-51. The playoff-bound girls team now stands at 10-4 overall on the season. A big congratulations to the undefeated girls indoor cross-country team on clinching the TVL championship this past weekend, and also to Hiller Swimming, who took home the victory at the TVL league meet. A lot of sports and many other programs can be seen airing soon, here is Courtney to tell you what to expect on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, February 13th at 1.30pm, the Diving TVL Championships will air. 
On Monday, February 15th at 7 p.m., Buffy Groves performs original songs inspired by her life and travels on a new Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Out to the highway, I found a new home on the highway. Welcome home. On Tuesday, February 16th at 7 p.m., learn about different weight loss methods that do not include heavy dieting or exercise in the first of the Hopkinton Holistic Health Speaker Series. On a new All About Hopkinton on Wednesday, February 17th at 8 p.m., Bill Shaw discusses the Historical Society and how it preserves history and shares some historical items and stories. We're trying to work on uh kind of creating more of a, a tour of the museum, so having posters, having information, so that you could have kind of a self-tour and learn something about the town by just walking through. And on HCAM Ed, Captain Kama and his crew sail the seas for Grammar Gold in the Pirates of Grammar Island. Check hcam.tv slash education for program dates and times. If you want to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter, we have a new link for that. Head over to hcam.tv slash connect where you can get all of this insight on our shows. Or you can sign up for our daily news updates to get the latest Hopkinton happenings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thanks a bunch, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be sure to stay warm throughout the frigid temperatures outside. Thanks for tuning in.
Stand.